I'm on the east coast of Africa in Matadoni. And things haven't changed here for more than a thousand years since the days of Sinbad. And that's why I'm here, because I'm going to take one of these about a thousand miles south to Zanzibar. Welcome to the world of Sinbad the Sailor and the start of an amazing adventure. My quest will take me down the northeast African coast from Lamu in Kenya to the tiny village of Kapini, then to the bustling port of Mombasa, and then to the voodoo island of Pemba, and finally to Zanzibar, the place once called the island at the end of the world. I'm about to sail into the life of an extraordinary character, a swashbuckling Arab seaman, explorer and merchant. The stories of Sinbad the Sailor astonish generations with tales of bizarre people and strange mythological creatures from unknown lands. And my adventure is launched just as it would have been in Sinbad's day, over a thousand years ago. Every man from the nearby village is here to drag 12 tons of solid teak to where she'll eventually meet the rising tide. The Indian teak hull is incredibly strong. Dows even smaller than this carried Arab sailors all the way to China and back again. Sinbad's crew would have been men just like these. They don't need plans or modern tools. Their boat building skills are handed down from father to son. And it's a special privilege to be allowed to join them as they celebrate seamanship, strength and manhood. This initiation is vital if I want to be part of their world. Because these East African sailors are the living Sinbads of the 21st century. Without compass or sextant, they still ply the coastal trade routes pioneered during the first millennium. But Sinbad himself is a man lost in mythology, a combination of many men and many deeds. One theory is that he came from Baghdad. The Baghdad merchants of his day controlled the vast Indian Ocean trade route, past Ceylon, through the Indonesian Spice Islands, all the way to China. My first stop on Sinbad's trail is here in Lamu, once a fortress port protected by the Sultan of Oman. This was a medieval Cape Canaveral, a launch pad for men brave enough to step off the ends of the earth, a likely place for Sinbad to start his African adventures. In these streets and buildings built of coral, he would have bought trade goods, spices, gold, ivory, leopard skins, rhino horn, peacocks, and generations of slaves. And this waterfront was Sinbad's last sight of modern civilization. From here, he sailed south to seek his fortune. And I want to find a Tao to do the same thing. But I'm a Mzungu, the Swahili word for European. 
so I need a formal introduction to the right captain. They have to charge you the price. Swali here is the local shipping no, agent. But in the end, it's up to me to bargain my way on board a Dow. Not an easy task when you don't speak the language. So it's, so it's from here, um, Kapini, mm -hmm. and then Malindi, mm -hmm. Mombasa. And here's and a tip. Never try to rush business in Africa. If I'm pushy, I'll pay twice what I need for my passage or miss out altogether. 5,000 shillings. 5,000. Yeah, I don't take up much space, you know. Uh, it's a big price. Can you do something better for me? He agreed it can make you for 3-5. Three, 3-5? Five. Three, five. Yes. OK. 3,500. That's great. Finally, the captain agrees, but he warns me to be ready to sail with the afternoon tide. He won't wait, and nothing else is sailing south for at least a week. So what I'd really like to find is a, an antique shop or something that sells really old things. The pressure is on. I've got just over four hours to find all my trade goods. I need antiques and perishable goods, such as grain and tobacco. And I have to get them at the cheapest price I can because like Simbad, I need to make a profit, or at least break shop, even. This is the best in Lamu, the antique shop which we have. So junk shop Lamu, huh? Yeah, this is old shop for junks. Usually the Lamu people, they were carving the woods and making their own junks. I've always been looking for these. These used to actually be made of rhino horn, which is obviously highly illegal these days. But how old is this yeah, one? Yeah, this is the original Jambia. Oh, really? From 1370. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. Really lovely. My plan is to trade the antiques in towns where they sell to foreign dealers, such as Mombasa. And I might even keep some for myself. So, if we take the sword, the knife, mm -hmm. and like this, this chest, mm -hmm. um, and these two, mm -hmm. and Aladdin's lamp here. Mm -hmm. 130,000 shares. Wow, that's... No. That's too much for me. <laughs> he said it's very little. <laughs> and here's another business tip. You've got to bargain. The louder and more creatively, the better. So I, I'll offer him 30,000. Mm. 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 This is very expensive junk. Mm. He said he cannot go less than 56 for you, 500. 56 for 100. Yeah, 56. Okay. Okay. Very good. Okay. Very good Finally, we get there. We've got him down to half the opening price. For 56,000 Kenyan shillings, or around $500 US, I'm in business. Well, that's pretty well blown my budget as far as antiques and the things I wanted to take to Australia. So what I've got to do now is try and find a whole lot of things I can sell right the way down the coast, all the way to Zanzibar, to pay for my passage. And that's exactly what Simbad did almost a thousand years ago. Swali is waiting for me here at the grain store. He's got a good deal on the grain and tobacco that are hard to get in the coastal yeah. villages to the south. Yeah, I can't tell the difference. This is number one. Is it? Yes. OK, so we've got tobacco, yes. we've got 10 bags of millet. Yes. Is there anything else that we can sell down the coast? Yes, zephyron over there. Zephyron. Fantastic. This is incredibly expensive in Australia. You know, the best of this stuff is about three times the price of gold. And this isn't quite that, but I think I can trade it really well down the coast and make a pretty good profit. The Dow crew is happy to earn an extra tip by getting my goods down to the waterfront. I'm glad I don't have to find my way through this maze of streets with all this stuff alone. And then I get my first sight of the ship I bargained so hard to join. <laughs> 